everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to hand paint a sock blank. We are going to use a few different stencils to create a pattern on this sock blank, but there is a twist here. In a previous episode of Dye Pot Weekly, I demonstrated how you can stencil onto a sock blank using uh, guar gum as a thickener to really define the shape that you have on the blank itself. But <laughs> um, I only used guar gum. And today I want to do the stenciling comparing dyes that have been mixed with guar gum to dyes that have not been mixed with guar gum, sort of side by side, so that way we can um, compare them, compare different colors, and really just get a good look at the differences and similarities. I have already mixed up the dyes. The guar gum solution that we are using today um, started off with a concentration of one half teaspoon of guar gum in one cup of water. And I used this Magic Bullet blender to blend things all together. Then I mixed the dyes in a one-to-one -one ratio of the guar gum solution and a 1% stock solution of uh, Dharma Deep Purple, Frozen, and Navy. For our non-guar gum solutions, I diluted um, the 1% stock solution one-to-one -one with some just plain tap water. So a third of a cup of tap water or guar gum plus a third of a cup of dye created these mixtures that we have here. There are a few different ways that we could play with these colors in a fun way. Um, but I thought it would be fun to do half of the blank with guar gum, and then the other half of the blank without the guar gum. Because I think that when this is unraveled, this will give some sharp sections of color and then some more blended sections of color in just sort of a fun, semi-repeating way. Um, and I thought it would be fun to play around with three different stencils, and yeah, I think that we will just have some fun here. Here we have a double-stranded Stroll Fingering Weight Sock Blank from Knit Picks. This blank is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and when you unravel it, you end up with two matched 50 gram balls of yarn. So it doesn't matter how wild we get with these patterns, we'll still get matched yarns in the end. As for the different colors and the color progression, I'm gonna kind of make that up as I go. But I am very, very excited to sort of just play around with this. And so I'm starting here with some guar gum. And there you can see the stencil moved a little bit on me. <laughs> and yeah, we're just having fun and painting. It's, I found that it's helpful to sort of hold it down as I go to really try to get the color placement um, reasonable. Oof. Now the nice thing about guar gum is that it is so thick. Um, I haven't used a stencil without guar gum for a while, so I'm a little nervous with my application technique. But even if it looks pretty good um, sort of as we go right away, um, when we steam this in the end, we might see things spreading out a bit further. So it's just sort of worth keeping that in mind. But at first look and first stretch, um, they do apply very similarly. You can sort of see this little bleed and spread here from the one without guar gum because it is just sort of spreading through the yarn, whereas the thickness of the guar gum sort of prevents things from moving too far. Now, the deep purple is gonna look fairly brown right now, but I do promise that it will look like a deep purple once we have um, steamed it. 
and I did confirm this today already. I was a little nervous when I was playing with this color earlier because it was looking so brown, but it did end up working out. Now for the no guar gum. I really like using foam brushes with um, these colors. I find that it's like really nice and an easy way to apply small amounts of dye without doing too much liquid. Um, obviously spraying can work really nicely as well. The less liquid that you add, the less the colors will spread out. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. If you don't have guar gum and or don't want to use guar gum, I think that if you have um, some kind of spray bottle, then that can really help. This is the navy. Oops, I sort of went into the other color section accidentally, but that is okay. So that was the guar gum, and here is the one without guar gum. I think one other thing we might see is that the colors might go through both layers of the of the blank more without the guar gum than with it. All right, here we have the first stencil. Again, on this half, I used only dyes with guar gum mixed in, and on this half, I did not. Let's lift up our stencil. So you can see the difference. I immediately went and sprayed off the stencil so that way um, things wouldn't bleed. But can you say that the difference is rather striking? Look at the definition of the detail on the side where we use the guar gum and how much things have spread out already on the side without guar gum. Now you can still see some of the stenciled elements and when I go to a stencil that has a little larger details overall, we might be able to see more of that. So it's not that everything is lost. It still can look really pretty and be really fun to do. It's just that a little bit of guar gum helps a lot. I think that this stenciling and these patterns will give a really cool effect on the final yarn. Um, my guess is that we'll have some larger splotches on half and then some more speckles on the other side, but we're not gonna know entirely until we've steamed it and unraveled it. And I will be unraveling this one at the end of the video. But now I want to add color to the rest of the blank. I think I'm gonna stick with the similar color theme where, um, hmm, I guess I didn't think this through entirely, but I. Yeah, I'm gonna do a similar kind of like stripey type pattern. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna speed this up, but I'll come back when it's time to remove the last two stencils. It's the moment of truth. Take off the stencil, carefully get it to the sink. Let's take off the other stencil and carefully get it to the sink before anything drips. So there is a huge difference here uh, between just the sharpness that we see when we use the guar gum versus the spread we see when we didn't. And I'm not sure if it's me or if this has spread more since I left to do the other two. The difference in this stencil right here is fairly subtle, except for the fact you can just see how sharp these lines are. I think in the other, the live stream where I first played with stenciling, I was able to show 
just how, even just with drawing a line, how sharp things can be with Gorgum versus not. Um, so I think that this would work great if you wanted to hand paint speckles, if you wanted to use a tiny paintbrush and write a message. You could get really clear, sharp definition in letters that maybe you wouldn't be able to do if you weren't using it. And that is even with colors that strike faster on a superwash yarn like this one. I think that we get a lot of great definition on the non guargum side on that stencil. So I think if you do want a stencil with without guargum, you really want to have large features. The smaller the details, um, the less likely they are to show up and the more likely they are to blend together. There will be affiliate links to the guargum, the stencils, the yarn, a lot of the things that I used in the video description. Now we need to steam our blank to set the color. So I will sort of wrap this up. I am curious if I were to have put the blank through my spin dryer to remove a lot of the excess water at the beginning, if I would see as much spread. Um, so that is something that could be worth exploring in the future. But yeah, you can really see a difference in the level of color saturation <laughs> without the guar gum and with. It's possible that the quantity of dye on the non guar gum side is greater just because I'm able to get a little more liquid in. Um, versus sort of painting on the surface, but you know, I think that this is going to be a really really fun yarn Experiments aside. I think the final yarn is going to be awesome. This is my dedicated dye pot um, It's a multi pot the brand I think is salt. I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond and I love it for dyeing yarn. It's held up really really well um, I'm now going to let this steam for 30 minutes and then we will unwrap it. The 30 minutes are up and now we can remove the blank. And even now you can tell which side had the guar gum and which side didn't. Um, I'm going to place this into an aluminum roasting pan just so it can cool completely. Let's unwrap and wash this awesome sock blank. Ideally, I'd like to use less plastic wrap, but I have yet to find a good substitute uh, for it for doing something like this, where I really want to keep the different pieces of our yarn separate from each other. But yeah, there is no question um, in just these quick looks that you can so easily tell the stenciled side that we did with the guar gum from the other side. And it's looking like there's no bleeding. Um, I am going to go ahead and use a little bit of some clear dish soap um, just to help. And since there is the guar gum in here, I will probably do a few extra rinses to make sure it is all rinsed out. But once I've rinsed out the soap and rinsed out the guar gum, I am going to put the stuff length through my Nina Soft spin dryer. Putting a sock blank through my laundry alternative, Nina Soft Spin Dryer, is the closest I've come to putting a hand knit garment in one of these. I mean, obviously, this blank was not hand knit, but it does have loose edges. So let's see how it will come out. It's only been in there for maybe about a minute. Um, and. Yeah, I would say it's come out, like I probably could leave it in there longer, but the edges have not been affected and I don't see any pulled stitches or anything like that. So I'm now gonna go hang this up so it can finish drying, but yeah, I'm pretty impressed with how this has come out. Here is the dry sock plank and it is beautiful. And once again, you can absolutely tell the difference between where we use guar gum here along the bottom and where we didn't along the top. 
I love seeing a little bit of breaking from this deep purple. Zooming in, you can get a little better view of the breaking. And I am really excited to try dip dyeing with this color to see just how it might break under those conditions. Just look at the difference and the sharpness of the lines from the stencil when we used just a little bit of guar gum. I think that that whole package that I have will probably last me a lifetime of dyeing. The back of the blank illustrates just how much the colors spread when you don't have a thickener like guar gum. We've got the guar gum section along the top and without along the bottom. And you can see there's such heavier penetration of the color on this portion without the guar gum. And so I think that over here, we might still get some speckles when we unravel it, but we will also see some larger patches of color. Whereas since we've got this nice shallow penetration and can see some white, even in those darker sections, we will get a few more speckles from those areas. The blank came out nearly perfect. And putting this through the Nina Soft Spin Dryer worked great. There was no unraveling, no tugged stitches. So I think that I would probably try using the spin dryer uh, when I'm ready to say block a lacy shawl to remove a lot of the water. I don't know. I think that it can do a really, really delicate job for hand knits. I am so excited to unravel this blank so that way we can see what the yarn looks like. While I am unraveling the blank that we dyed in this video, I will also be unraveling the sock blank that we dyed in Dye Pot Weekly 110, um, and I'll show you what this one looks like at the end of the video. Here are the blanks unraveled. It's a little hard to see what the gradient would be like when it looks like spaghetti, but first I'll go closer on the one from Dye Pot Weekly 110. Okay, this yarn has the soft gradient of tones from the background with these sort of smallish medium brown speckles throughout the whole yarn. Um, some of the speckles will be more concentrated in areas and less because if you look at the original stenciled image, um, there's areas you can see rows with more and less brown. And if I twist them up, you can get a sense of the speckling. It's harder in skein form to see what the gradient progression is like, but that's why I always show a picture of the intact blank when I add these kinds of matched pairs into my shop. Now let's take a closer look at the yarn from today. This yarn is cool. There'll be some variegated and sort of almost striped sections because of the way that we had these colors laid out on the blank. If you stretch it out a bit so that way you can see the crimp, you can see that we have some longer sections of color, but then there's also speckled sections in here. And I think it's a really nice interplay of the longer sections from where we had no guar gum to the more speckled areas where we did. There we go. And in some places, because of the resist from the stitches, we have what even looks like white speckling on there. I love unraveling my sock blanks because I like to see what the yarn looks like in the end. And I love my automated skein winder because that lets me unravel the blank in just minutes. Whereas to do it by hand, it takes a lot more arm strain. It maybe takes like 20, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how much I'm chatting since I usually do that in a live stream. The benefit of unwinding these by hand is that you can get a much better picture of what the gradient looks like. And that's why, like when I did the donut video, I unraveled that by hand because I wanted to really see clearly what the progression would look like. Unfortunately, I can't unravel all of them by hand, but I hope that they, um, the pictures of this yarn now unraveled in combination with what the blank looks like will help you visualize what kind of projects you might be able to make out of it. And this yarn just looks so, so cool. When we were looking at it in the blank, it was very obvious 
where the non guar gum was versus the guar gum stenciled. However, now that we're looking at it in skein form, you know, there isn't something that is like, ooh, this is one part and this is the other. There's longer patches, there's shorter patches, there's speckles, and there's a lot of variation of it because we did stencil it. So the size of various parts will vary throughout the whole skein, which is why it's wonderful to have a matched set um, because we started with a double-stranded sock blank. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this dyeing experiment. I love to compare, contrast, whether it's different fiber types or techniques, to look at the small differences adding another component, such as guar gum, can give us when we are creating a blank. Using guar gum with stencils will give some more speckling. Um, you'll see more teeny patches of color, Whereas if without the guar gum, you'll get more um, saturation of the dyes, which will give you some bigger patches of color. I've twisted the yarn up so we can get a sense of what it looks like, but it still has that crimp in it. So now I'm gonna go just soak it in some tap water, um, maybe snap it and hang it up to dry so that way this crimp can relax and it won't be that sort of kinky, twisted um, mess that could tangle easily for when someone wants to knit with it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like, turn on notifications, leave a comment, and let me know what you thought. Is there anything else that I should do for guar gum versus no guar gum in the future? If you're already subscribed and you want to support Chemnitz on an additional level to help us keep producing really, really fun yarn dyeing videos, you should check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform that connects fans with the content creators that they enjoy. And in exchange for your monthly support, you can get some really cool perks. I offer patrons exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new videos, um, influence in the direction that I take certain videos, and more. You can find a link in the video description and iCard and see all the details over there on Patreon. Thank you so, so much for watching.